crazy bastards. You're back here with Rob Kimball on the Sons of Wrestling for a WWE Raw review. Now, uh, this is a show that we get to see Heath Slater pick up a victory. Yes, over Mr. Money in the Bank. And we've seen a pedigree tonight. Not by Triple H, though. Stephanie McMahon with one... Two pedigrees tonight. Let's move on. So we start off the show with the authority selling the WWE Network and selling the value. $9.99 a month. That's it. You get SummerSlam. $9.99 a month. They read off the card for only $9.99 a month. Pretty damn good deal. Seriously, two or three years ago, if you were to say SummerSlam is going to be $10, bucks, you would say, holy shit, I'll jump on that. But it's funny now that they're actually selling their network at $10 a month. People are shitting all over it. You get the pay-per-views for 10 bucks. Jesus. Anyway, uh, Randy Orton starts going off on what he's going to do to Roman Reigns. Well, Roman Reigns' music hits. He comes down, and he has a better deal. He says, you know what? I'll come down there and kick Randy Orton's ass right now for free. Screw $9.99, so... Pretty cool little intro, but Triple H pulls him back, tells him now, you at SummerSlam. That's the way that's going, but Roman Reigns tonight, you have a match. It's a last man standing match against Kane. So, we end your matches next. So that starts off the show, Roman Reigns versus Kane, and we have a decent back and forth. Kane has got a lot of control here. And it makes Roman Reigns look like, you know, he's vulnerable sometimes. And he's not always the beast that can just take over the goddamn show. Which is really cool. But then in the end here, you get a Superman punch. But prior before that, there was a Superman punch attempt that turned into a choke slam through a table. Pretty damn cool spot. But like I said, in the end, Superman punch with a spear combo. Ended up winning this where Kane could not get up within 10. So, Roman Reigns stands strong. And I seen on his Twitter account, he got, uh, I think, six staples in his head after this. So, I wonder how he's going to be feeling here in the next two weeks going into SummerSlam. Then we have a uh, John Cena, Brock Lesnar video package building up SummerSlam on everything that you know promos because they're not there tonight you know why would they be shit so we ended up airing this video package twice tonight why not but I am I can't wait for the match either way so whatever then we have Damien Sandow come out boomer sooner death whatever you know they're in Texas so that's the way it goes he has a match against Mark Henry good to see Mark Henry back he comes out Pretty much kicks Damian Sandow's ass in about 15 seconds or so. World's Strongest Slam. That's that. And uh, Mark Henry looks strong in a hometown crowd. Awesome. Then we have the Rosebuds. Adam Rose. They're hanging out backstage. Fucking around looking in a mirror. They're all tripping on shrooms or something. I don't know. So he's staring in this mirror. He sees Lemon himself. Dressed as a normal person I guess. So that was that. Uh, boring. Then we have Dean Ambrose versus Alberto Del Rio in a holy shit awesome match. It's a beat the clock match to pick the stipulation. So if Ambrose wins in under the time frame that Seth Rollins can win his match, then he gets to pick the stipulation at SummerSlam for their match. So this goes on 15 minutes and 42 seconds it was. And pretty much Del Rio's running this whole shit. And in the end, we do end up getting uh, Dirty Deeds on Del Rio for the victory. And you think in 15 and a half minutes, ain't happening. And then that crazy fucking DDT off the top turnbuckle from Del Rio to Ambrose. And he kicked out. Wow. Awesome. This match was fucking insane. Like I've been saying the last few weeks, Del Rio's matches... He's doing great. He's putting over these guys, and he's looking strong himself. This guy knows how to go in the ring, and I'm glad that maybe his character will develop a little bit more than what he was doing prior because it sucked. 
but now he's just pulling off kick-ass matches and you can't deny that so kudos to Del Rio then uh, we have Rusev and during commercial we found out I guess he had a match with Sin Cara. we come back from commercial and we find out who his opponent was and he had won so we didn't get to see the match or who his opponent was so that's that then we have uh, Lana going on she starts to sing Swagger and Zeb come out they ain't feeling it and uh, this is all about America Zeb Coulter cuts a killer fucking promo here and uh, really it just Lana and Rusev just back the fuck out they're ready to go but then we get a few extra words in there and that pisses them off Rusev comes in uses the uh, the flag as a weapon on Jack Swagger and then they corner Zeb Coulter but Lana backs him off and that's where we stand so can't wait for that match USA chance big time really cool shit it's like a Rocky 4 all over again very fun awesome shit then we have Cesaro versus Dolph Ziggler awesome match right Dolph Ziggler Cesaro fucking quick ass match Miz on commentary and we get a zigzag that's it wow Cesaro what happened hopefully there is a plan here hopefully we're not lost in the shuffle that ends up turning into a, a goodbye or just a guy on superstars so I don't know what happened but although Dolph Ziggler winning awesome pretty cool shit and then uh, Miz comes in raises his belt and this turns into a uh, almost super kick to his moneymaker face. So, Ziggler's ready. He said, laugh it up. Enjoy it while you got it. See you on Sunday. Two weeks. Hopefully, Ziggler takes the belt. Then we have Paige backstage. She's hoping for AJ speedy recovery. You know, just playing that whole role. Just real. Ah, I like her. I like her. But she don't like her. So, whatever. Rybaxel versus Road Dust. And uh, easy victory for the boys, the Dust Brothers. They come out victorious, like always. When is Rybaxel going to split? Comment below. I don't know. I would like to see it happen soon. I would like to see them just feud with each other for a little while and turn that into future feuds down the road. That's that. Then we have uh, Kane backstage coming up to Stephanie and Triple H. And he takes the mask off again. Hands it to him with a shitty wig. <laughs> so I guess Corporal Kane's back or Kane's just going to retire. Who knows? We're going to find out. Comment, where do you think Kane's going? Personally, I know it's coming down to the end, man. He's he's up there in age. He can still go in the ring. No, not, not taking that away from him, but I think it's time for him to almost, you know, hang up the boots. Head on out. Then we have Jericho versus Harper. Now, if he, if Jericho can beat Luke Harper, he's no longer going to be available at SummerSlam, so it'll be just Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. One-on-one. -on -one, pretty cool. Can't wait. And, uh, well, Jericho does lock in the walls of Jericho, but the lights go out. Bray Wyatt's ringside, and then uh, Rowan comes in. He catches a code breaker. Luke Harper, code breaker. And then... Bray Wyatt's got the upper hand, nails a thumb to the throat, and nails Sister Abigail. So he's getting into the head, although he got a DQ, so Luke Harper won't be available. It'll just be one-on-one, -on -one, man versus man, but he's getting in the head of Jericho here. So pretty cool. Can't wait for that match, and I can't wait for Bray Wyatt to get back into that track that he was on before his John Cena match. So comment below about that. Hit the thumbs up if you want. Bray Wyatt back on track to where he was headed and that I can't wait for then we have uh, Fandango Hornswoggle's his new dancer against Diego he's got the Summer Ray Layla El Torito and quick easy backstab to Fandango with a little distraction and Stupid. Anyway, I'm not even going to talk about it. Jesus Christ, we got the new, new Drew McIntyre out of Fandango. Then we have Bo Dallas versus R-Truth again. If both guys, they are just 
little vicious going on. They got a little competition going on here, which is pretty cool. I like to see our truth in there having matches because he's a great talent. Yes, he's an older guy, but he moves like a 25-year-old. Jesus. Then, uh, well, Bo Dallas rolls up, pulls the fucking pants on truth, gets the victory here. But this pisses off our truth So we got a little back and forth, but that turns into a bow dog outside of the ring off the apron, steel steps, boom. So Bo Dallas is Bo leaving as usual. Then we have Bray backstage cutting a promo saying that he is Jericho's nightmare at the end of his dream. Now this is a good ass promo as usual by Bray Wyatt, but it's going back more down that track of why you're more intrigued by what he's saying. So awesome. Then we have our second beat the clock challenge with uh, Seth Rollins needing to beat 15 minutes and 42 seconds against RVD. Well, the authority had other plans and took RVD out of this match and interjected Heath Slater. Heath Slater. So everybody's got a chuckle. Obviously, you know who's going to win, but Dean Ambrose shows up ringside as the match begins and uh, he's got some shenanigans going on. He grabs the briefcase now all these distractions just are in, he's in Seth Rollins' head, big time. He opens up the briefcase, he takes the contract out, rips it up. Now this is great to see the contract actually in the briefcase. This was a thing that we used to talk about years ago, me and a few friends, about what's really in the briefcase. So anyway, contract was in there, rips it up, dumps a soda in it from a fan, dumps some popcorn in it from another fan, takes JBL's cowboy hat, folds it up, stuffs it in there. Now all of this is distracting Seth Rollins big time and roll up victory Heath Slater with the three man band music still playing and there's only one of him so they should have changed up his track to the one man southern rock band but they didn't because they just don't give a shit about Heath Slater. But he did pick up a victory on Monday Night Raw. Good for him. Awesome. He is a decent talent and he can go in a ring. So I hope hope one day he gets out of that little gimmick and changes into something different. Then we have the contract signing between Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella. Now Brie comes down to the ring with Nikki and uh, Stephanie's with Triple H. The Triple H says that you know he's not going to be there. Obviously, he's going to have Michael Cole come in because it's his wife. And uh, well, we get some back and forth between the two. Good words. We get a lot of CM Punk chants here with uh, what Bree has to say. And uh, well, Stephanie McMahon, she she's ready to fucking rock this anyway. So she. Uh, we get the little desk slip over by Triple H into the turnbuckle and uh, Nikki gets pedigreed by Stephanie McMahon and uh, well Triple H is over there giggling in the corner Brie Bella slaps him across the face pretty cool but this turns into Stephanie McMahon pedigreeing Nikki or Brie my bad in the middle of the ring and uh, she takes everybody out and she continues the yes chance. So Stephanie McMahon standing strong in the middle of the ring. Haven't seen her in the ring in about 10 years. So this will be cool at SummerSlam. And uh, what do you guys think? Is Summer, SummerSlam going to rock? Comment down here. Is it going to continue these feuds like Battleground did? I don't think so. I think this is where all of those will start to end and move into new ones for I think it's Night of Champions after so that's my take on Monday Night Raw it was okay the two video packages the same video package was a little ridiculous lots of commercials especially during a match that you didn't even know who the opponent was and when you came back the opponent that you found out actually lost so that was silly and uh, some things that they could capitalize on, but especially having your main eventers on SummerSlam should be on the show building it more than just a video package twice. So that's my take. Hit the thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter at Rob Kimball.
brand. And go check out my t-shirts at sonsofwrestling.com or sonsofwrestling.spreadshirt.com. Description has the links. And hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe, all that good shit if it's the first time on my channel. And I enjoy conversating with you when you leave your comments. Peace.